What I want to do in this session is I want to tell you what we are doing at SAP uh, this year tangibly to deliver on our integration promise, right? This is TechEd, so I have a couple of technology initiatives that we're applying across the SAP application portfolio um, that will solve uh, some you know, technical challenges and opportunities that we have in the integration camp. And, and I will translate these into business value for you so that you can find out um, you know, what's, what's in it for you when, when we talk about integration. Okay, before I do that, I will read through uh, two pages of disclaimer <laughs> and uh, talk a little bit about the intelligent enterprise as a framework, and then we'll look at how the business technology platform helps us basically ground that in a technical foundation, which is then necessary to you know, talk about the technology guidelines that we have set with our um, engineering leads in all areas in the company to ensure that we, that we execute towards integration. All right, so as you know, the intelligent enterprise is our strategy and we are articulating basically the value flows that we address with SAP's applications across four major processes. They are lead to cash, source to pay, total workforce management, and design to operate. And um, they cover, those are mega processes covering 70% of the value chain in an organization, right? Lead to cash, uh, you know, picking up on uh, leads, like trying to get a feeling for where does the money come from all the way into basically um, you know, an order hitting the S4 system or as we like to say connect the front office to the back office. So main applications in this process is the C4 HANA portfolio and the S4. Source to pay is about intelligently um, you know, procuring things um, you know, being uh, conscious about how you can save money by, by picking the right vendors and so forth and um, yeah, getting spend management under control. This is mainly, again, Ariba and S4. Total workforce management addresses how you manage a, a diverse workforce, right, with success factors for permanent workers, field class, for temporary workers, um, SAP analytics cloud for headcount planning and budgeting as well as um, S4, of course, um, for basically allocating the cost and the budgets. Design to operate is everything around the digital supply chain, manufacturing processes, and things of that nature. Now, the business technology platform powers the intelligent enterprise by um, basically infusing technical applications and services underneath it that build the glue to fit all of this together. Um, and if we zoom into the middle part of this, we will see what this is in detail. And um, I'm highlight a couple of those technologies because they're relevant for our integration strategy. One is certainly the ideas of being open with APIs. Um, obviously, we have a portfolio of, of integration tools and um, analytics is another big value driver for integration, but we'll go into the details soon. Okay, having covered that, I will now explain what we do um, in this business technology platform framework tangibly for you to um, yeah, understand what we're doing in integration this year and how you can get value from it. One thing uh, which is very fundamental is the concept of reference architectures. So we have um, a methodology called industry reference architectures and we are publishing now 
um, in a tool called Enterprise Architecture Designer, which every one of you can access, um, the end-to-end -end business processes that I just mentioned, right? So these four mega processes. Here, uh, this tool now shows you in so-called um, value flow diagrams um, what uh, this process now looks like, and you can find out what SAP applications and services are required if you want to run this process, right? So it helps you understand the bill of material, but it also helps you understand what sort of the North Star or reference architecture is in terms of all the things that you need to basically um, you know, run a lead to cash process as part of the intelligent enterprise. And you can also see how these components interact with each other. Right? There are data flow diagrams, there are software collaboration diagrams that basically show um, as we integrate across these processes how data flows and when and at what point in the process. And this is also a great starting point for you to plan extensions of these processes. Um, so the tool is called Enterprise Architecture Designer. We can, we can show it to you um, in the Q&A part if you like. All right. Another thing we're doing is um, we're integrating now based on what we call aligned business APIs. This is a strategy we have set in motion already in 2016. You might have seen a CIO guide on that topic. In a nutshell, what's happening here is we're saying as um, basically any two applications talk to each other in, you know, as part of those four processes, we want to set ourselves up in a way that customers don't have to operate a middleware to basically make that connectivity work. Like, for example, getting a CSV file from A, doing something with it and sending it to B um, is something that, that we absolutely don't want, but we rather want to have um, a list of APIs which we will basically uh, call um, along these processes. And, and this list of APIs is, by the way, also something that you can find, if I jump back quickly, in, in this enterprise architecture designer in the software collaboration diagrams. OK. And in addition to, to uh, basically framing what these APIs look like, we also publish them in API Hub so that you can um, also use them to, you know, maybe uh, do, do an extension uh, leveraging this API, right? So two uh, birds with one stone. Okay, domain model alignment is uh, an activity which we kicked off early this year, which Jürgen also referenced yesterday in his keynote, right? Jürgen talked about SAP's vision to have one semantic data model um, that goes across all our applications. So what, what we did here is we started with um, the top eight master data objects that you need if you look at those four mega processes. Those are um, you know, customer, supplier, employee or worker, as we call it now, um, asset, product, uh, cost object, so cost center, WBS element, and so forth, uh, org structure, and task, although task is not strictly a master data object. But um, to, for, for those objects, we now have arrived at a common definition. And um, this will be the wire protocol, so to speak. So if between any two applica SAP applications, um, a product is on the wire, it'll be according to the specification. And um, I also talked yesterday a little bit about what we're doing with SAP Graph. That's one piece where we expose this model, but um, there are other uses of this aligned model which we will also publish at some point, um, hopefully uh, by the end of this year. And then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll tackle many, many more objects, um, but this will already get us started towards driving integration based on this object model. 
What we do with these master data objects, and that's why we started with master data, is we were also, um, uh, you know, changing a little bit the strategy on how, how we want to deal with master data replication and synchronization across the intelligence suite. That's a topic that I'm uh, very passionate about. So what, 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 we, what we do here is, as we define what an employee or worker looks like or what a cost center looks like, we want to make sure that customers don't have to do anything in the standard intelligent suite case where you enact one of these processes in order to make sure that these objects are consistent in all the applications that participate in the process. So for example, if in S4HANA a cost center is changed, right, we will make sure that this cost center change is propagated to success factors, to field class, to concur, and so forth. So think a little bit about it as a conveyor belt, right, that turns uh, these master data objects around. This is um, manifested in, in a component which, which were, uh, you know, close to, um, uh, you know, initially releasing, which we call one master data service, which will be something that will be you know, available together with um, an, you know, any intelligent suite application, and it will basically provide this conveyor belt functionality. Um, then on top, you, know, you might have additional things to control master data, maybe to orchestrate more complex landscapes, um, or to do duplicate checks, data quality, um, you know, things of that nature but that would sit on top of that transport layer, right? And uh, in, in that respect, for example, we have a service called um, Master Data Service for Business Partner, which, which is basically uh, leveraging this transport layer as, um, as something underneath to get its data from and also write back changes that it, that it finds in there. All right, automated provisioning and integration. So. We want to make sure that you, as a customer, um, can trigger provisioning of all systems that you're entitled to use because maybe you're onboarding to one particular intelligence suite process or bought the necessary products for that, that you have one system where you can trigger all the provisioning activities that are related to that. So this way you can make sure that everything you need to run a particular process is actually provisioned and not one piece in the bill of material still needs to be activated, um, but you can basically manage that in a central place. I cannot, uh, I think the, the, the name um, of the thing uh, is, is, is not announced, but, but it's something that's, that's coming up um, very soon. The second step is, once you provision these systems, there is usually a couple of configuration steps. And here also we want to make sure that we automate them as much as possible. Like for example, if you are uh, an S4 Cloud customer and you have uh, you know, given us your org structure, why should we ask you the org structure again if you adopt success factors? Right? So we will make sure also this data is propagated across the portfolio or technical configurations like, okay, um, what's the URL for my success factor system? Uh, you shouldn't be finding that out and putting it into some configuration uh, object in S4, but we should basically just do that as part of the provisioning. And, um, there are some things where administrator intervention is necessary, but uh, there will also be a tool which will basically moderate this and, and uh, pull these guys in at the right point in time. So the whole cluster of um, identity management, our ambition is to provide security by default for the intelligent enterprise. And this encompasses many things. The simplest one is of course, single sign-on across all the elements in the portfolio where we are 99% there, okay, 
check, but also it, this is about configuring the identity provider uh, out of the box for this to, to basically be there as you buy an additional application uh, from SAP. Right? Why should you be um, basically creating users all over again, right? Um, or basically uh, burden the end users to provide their name, image, things of that nature again? Um, this is also uh, part of what we call um, identity provisioning as part of the identity lifecycle. Uh, where we will have a bunch of high-level roles which translate into access rights into um, the participating intelligence suite applications. Deprovisioning is similar, so if an employee is terminated, you want to make sure that you revoke access to all the systems that this person has as fast and uh, as possible and, and be complete about it for compliance reasons, which is also part of this identity lifecycle solution. You know, around user experience, we're going for harmonizing um, the, uh, the, the UIs across the portfolio according to the Fiori design guidelines. So this is about the look, right? But it's also about the feel, which means here it's, it's about, you know, is the OK button always in the same corner of the screen? Um, uh, what is the behavior of the browser back button? Uh, is that different across applications? So this is um, basically ensuring that you know, training efforts that you have for your end users are basically leveraged um, across multiple applications. And, uh, and, and us following certain guidelines, um, which we have defined in, in Fiori and uh, where every application is working towards. Analytics, um, I mentioned that already. We have two cases here. One is, we call it embedded analytics. This is basically, instead of every SAP application uh, having uh, you know different kinds of dashboarding tools to to show analytics that are part of these applications. We are embedding SAP Analytics Cloud in all of these applications. And you heard Jürgen yesterday um, announcing uh, SAC embedded in S4 Cloud, which is a good example of this. So SAC will basically just be there whenever there is an you know, analytics part that happens within these applications. Then there's also cross-application analytics. So here the vision is that um, you know, as you turn on SAC, there should be pre-configured models and reports that give you instant value across these intelligence suite processes, right? You shouldn't be building these models, but um, you should get going with predefined content that, that we build across SAP's applications. And by the way, the domain model alignment activity that I mentioned earlier is also vital to that because this also um, helps us to um, manage things like values or code lists as we sometimes call them. So in, in, in some applications, uh, Germany might be represented with DE, in others it might be represented with GER, right? But at the end of the day, you want to have um, you know, some sales analytics by country and you want to make sure that you talk about Germany and you don't want to uh, basically harmonize these code lists on your own. All right, wrapping up, I talked about the end-to-end -end processes that SAP provides as part of the intelligence suite. I talked about how the business technology platform provides the underpinning for that um, with certain services and tools which are then leveraged by technology guidelines that we have set to the development teams to basically create integrated experiences around the topics that I walked you through this morning. And uh, yeah, thanks again for coming and goodbye.